Welcome back. Are you feeling better? Good, I am too. In the men's room, a gentleman turned to me and he asked, did anyone ever tell you what an amusing speaker you are, Mr. Cantor? And I said, no, why? He said, then what gives you the idea that you are? <laughs> so I peed on his leg. And I feel so much better. Well, Freddie Sherman must still be on his way, but fortunately we have someone who has arrived, not only here, but at the top of his profession as a storyteller. We have seen his versatility in films as a dramatic actor and in television where he's a comedy headliner. Wherever he appears, he carries a Jewish good luck charm, a rabbi's foot. <laughs> He's as witty off stage as he is on. When Jackie drove him here tonight, a very pregnant woman jumped in front of their car. He slammed on the brakes just in time, and this quick-thinking comic yelled, Hey, lady, you can get knocked down, too. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to bring you the great pleasure of the classic dialect stories of Hank Garrett. I'm looking for the uh, people that own the Akita. <laughs> Where are you folks? Where are you? I promise you this is true. <clears throat> Do you people know what an Akita is? It's a large Japanese dog that was used to guard the temple in Japan. I go to a friend's house last night for dinner. I promise you this is true. And they had an Akita. I'm sitting there, the dog comes over and buries his head in my crotch. <laughs> now my friend's wife is embarrassed, she doesn't know what to say. What does she say? <laughs> it probably smells your dog. <laughs> Number one, I don't have a dog. Number two, if I had a dog, honest to God, I would not keep him in here. Thank God it was the golden retriever. I'm originally from New York, and I gotta tell you something, I miss New York. I miss New York because there was a sense of family and warmth that I've never found anywhere else in the world. For example, any given morning, my grandmother, my grandfather would get up, then my mother and father would get up, then my Uncle Charlie and my Aunt Rose would get up. My cousin Seymour and my cousin Ruth would get up. My brother Murray and my brother Saul would get up. Before you knew it, I had that whole bed to myself. It was... I never slept alone until I got married. My grandparents came from Odessa, Russia, and we lived in Harlem, 111th Street between Park and Lexington. My grandfather loved Western movies. Three times a week he went to see Western movies, he called them cowboy pictures. <laughs> Three times a week to see cowboy pictures. And as luck would have it, the neighborhood changed, it became a Puerto Rican neighborhood, and the theater became a Spanish-speaking theater. And my grandfather still went to the movies three times a week. I said, Grandpa, it's a Spanish theater. Do you understand Spanish? He says, oh, in the English, I understood. <laughs> worked in a dress factory, and he was a sewing machine operator who was there for 27 years, and an Irish gentleman that he worked with passed on. My grandfather was invited to the wake. He did not know what a wake was, nor was he too familiar with the neighborhood. The wake was at 110 East 72nd Street. He wound up at 110 West 72nd Street, what happened to be a house of ill repute. <laughs> Knocked on the door, was greeted by the madam who said upstairs. <laughs> Went upstairs and he was greeted by a scantily clad young lady who said, take off your clothes. <laughs> Not knowing the customs. <laughs> she threw him on the bed and she had her way with him. When she was finished, she said, get dressed and go downstairs. He did. There was the madam with a hand extended. Grandpa took a hand, shook it, and said, we should only meet by happier circumstances. <laughs> My 
My grandfather reached the age of 65 and he was told he's eligible to collect Social Security. He ran down to the Social Security office and said, I would like to apply for the Social Security. The lady said, do you have means of identification proof of age? She says, I don't got nothing to show. She said, open your shirt. Opened his shirt. She took a look at his chest. She saw the wrinkles in the gray hair. She said, I'm going to say that you're 65. You can go ahead and collect Social Security. He was thrilled. Ran home to my grandmother. Said, sir, I went to that place. The lady said, I got to see something. I, pay. I didn't have nothing to show. She said, open the shirt. She took one look by me in her chest and she said, you can collect Social Security. Grandma said, you should adopt a pension. You could also collect disability. <laughs> Two gentlemen of Italian persuasion meet. <coughs> Luigi, how come you don't come around and no more drink a cup of coffee, play little cards? I'm too busy for this in honor sense. Every night, I go to night to school. I'm going to learn to be a citizen of the United States of America. I'm going to make a something of myself. I'm going to be so intelligent. In fact, I'm going to ask you a question I learned in the night school. See what do you know. Who is it, George Washington? The man said, George Washington. <laughs> oh, yeah, he got a bigger bridge in New York. People go back in the fall to pay a lot of money. He said, You see how stupid you is? I learned in the night school George Washington was the first president of the United States of America. You see how stupid you was, you dummy? I can't hang around with you riff a riff. <laughs> Fred says, excuse me, I'm going to ask you something, please? Go ahead. Who is Vito Balducci? Vito Balducci? Who is Vito Balducci, smart guy, schoolboy? <laughs> I don't know who's Vito Balducci. Vito Balducci is the man who sleep with your wife when you is in the night to school. <laughs> One day, one day my grandmother complained bitterly to my grandfather. She said, Shmuel, I'm very, very nervous, very nervous. I don't know what to did. Shmuel said, why don't you go to the doctor? She did. She came back from the doctor. She said, Shmuel, the doctor says the reason why I'm so nervous, I don't got enough sacks. S-E-X sex. <laughs> he says, I need sex eight times a month. Shmuel said, all right, put me down for two. <laughs> the old timers went to the local doctor. They didn't really travel too far. This doctor had a sign in his office that said, death does not mean an end to your financial obligation. <laughs> A little lady came into this doctor's office and she was completely bent over walking with a little cane. She walked into the doctor's office, she was there for about 10 minutes and she came out and she was completely erect, taking strong strides. My grandfather walked over to the nurse and said, what kind of miracle did that, that doctor perform? She said, no miracle, all he did was give her a longer cane. <laughs> My grandfather went to this doctor and he said, Doctor, I'm having a problem. I can't function sexually. Can you do something for me? Doctor said, you've come to the right place. There's a very simple operation that we can perform and I guarantee you will be able to function sexually once every six months. And the cost is $7,500. For $15,000, there's a little more extensive operation but you will be able to function sexually every single month without fail. For $25,000, there's an operation. You will be able to function sexually every single night of the year. My grandfather said, every single night from the year? I'm going home. I'm going to discuss that with my wife. I'll call you right back. He ran home. Fifteen minutes later, the doctor's phone rang. It was my grandfather. He said, have you made a decision? He said, yes, sir. We decided to remodel the kitchen. <laughs>
grandfather had a friend. And I remember my grandfather calling this gentleman and said, Morris, how you doing? He says, I know you are having a problem with the memory. He says, well, I've got to tell you something. I've been going to a doctor, a specialist for that. Ever since I'm going to that man, my memory has improved 80%. He says, my God, what's the name for that doctor? He says, the name for the doctor is... <laughs> the name for the doctor... What is that flower? Got a long green stem with thorns, and you give it for special anniversaries and all kinds of occasions. He says, Rose. He says, that's it. Rose, what's the name of that doctor that I'm... <laughs> I... Just a few minutes ago, I had to call home. I have my wife and my two children. I spoke to my wife, who is a typical Californian, and I said, hi, honey. And she said, hi, I'm having a problem. I said, what's wrong? She said, I can't get the car started. I said, why? She said, the carburetor's wet. How do you know the carburetor's wet? She said, the car's in the pool. I have two children. Now you heard Jackie earlier talk about his daughter and getting a car. My son is 16 years old. He's a wonderful kid. He's a sweet kid. He's not the brightest kid in the world. To give you an idea how bright he is not, we were gonna name him Otto so he'd only have two letters to remember. <laughs> but he's 16 and he had to have a car. So we got him a car. In the first six months, he put 90,000 miles on this car. <laughs> now he comes to me and he says, Dad, I want to sell the car, but I don't know what to do. Nobody will buy it. It's got 90,000 miles on it. <laughs> what should I do? I said, why don't you do what every honest, red-blooded American would do? Turn back the odometer. <laughs> he did. Three weeks later, I came to him and I said, well, did you sell the car? He says, why should I sell it? It's only got 6,000 miles. <laughs> Now you see why we named him Otto. I have another son who's nine years old. A couple of weeks ago, we went to Burger King. My little son, who was nine, little boy, got himself positioned behind a lady who had a really sizable, quite large, what's the word I'm looking for? Derriere, thank you so much. The lady is wearing a boutique t-shirt that reads guess. My son is muttering, oh, 275, 300. <laughs> the woman was wearing a beeper, and it suddenly went off. Beep, 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 beep. My son yelled, oh my God, look out, she's backing up. <laughs> Two gentlemen are speaking. Can you believe my wife got PMS at 82? The other fellow says, big deal, I got AT&T at 75. <laughs> PMS, three letters that strikes terror into every man's heart. You agree? PMS stands for Positively Maniac Syndrome. Always know when my wife is getting PMS when she sits in the kitchen in the morning stirring her coffee with a butcher knife. <laughs> staring at me like I'm a pot roast. And now I'm suffering from something, three letters, men, some of you will understand. MPB, male pattern balding. You'll notice the vacancy. <laughs> You can always tell when a man is losing his hair when he starts parting it lower and lower and lower and combs the three hairs over to one side. <laughs> Balding in my family is a terrible curse. My uncle Leo, completely bald, not a single hair on his head, worked in a lady's shoe store as a clerk. 
He was putting a pair of shoes on a lady who had her head turned to the side. When she looked down, she saw Uncle Leo's bald head. She thought her knee was sticking out. She picked up her dress to cover what she thought was her knee. Uncle Leo thought the lights went out. And he started groping for the light switch. His case comes up next Thursday. How many people here had the very good fortune of seeing that wonderful show, Phantom of the Opera? Truly, yes. I was one of the lucky ones who did get to see the show. Picture this, if you will, the Phantom of the Opera. Standing room only sold out, every seat is sold out. Every seat is occupied except for one. Little lady is sitting next to that empty seat. A woman gets up enough nerve to approach her and say, excuse me, I don't mean to pry. There's an empty seat next to you. How is it possible? Woman said, well, to tell you the truth, my husband and I, we waited a year and a half to see this production from Phantom Fin de Hoppus. <laughs> and as luck would have it, my husband dropped dead. <laughs> woman said, oh, I'm terribly sorry, but could you have asked a friend to come with you? She said, no, they're all at the funeral. <laughs> the lady's faced with the task of calling the local newspaper to place the ad in the obituary column and she speaks to someone. She says, I'd like to talk to somebody from the obituaries. Man says, yes ma'am, go ahead and I'll take the information. My name is Rosa Lewin, happily married to Max Levine for 47 years. We came originally from Chicago, you can tell by the accent. <laughs> we got three wonderful children, Philip, Margaret and Joan. Philip is our CPA, can't pay anybody. We got five wonderful grandchildren. The man says, ma'am, let me stop you. It's five dollars a word. She said, oh, all right, Levine died. <laughs> he said, it is a five word minimum. She said, all right, dear, Levine died, Buick for sale. <laughs> I have this one story which I have to share with you. Two gentlemen are sitting in a park. Friend says, can you guess how old I am today? Friend says, stand up. Drop the pants. Drop the shorts and bend over. He's in this position. His friend gets behind him and says, all right. He says, your wife's name is Jenny. You're married 54 years. You got two daughters. One is living by Boy Bank. The other one is in North Hollywood, and today you're 87 years old. Friend says, my God, how do you know that? He says, you told me yesterday. 